Hey, I'm Hayden James, and I'm here with Block FM. You turn and face me, maybe this time I'll choose. Um, so, something about you was a huge single and in a lot of ways propelled you to a completely new level of notoriety. Like, what do you think it was about that song that people were so drawn to? Um, yeah, first, like, thanks for having me. It's really good to be here. Um, I've never been to Japan before, so that's really good. Um, yeah, that was a really big song for me. Um, I'd only released um, an EP before that. Um, so, yeah, it was quite a shock that it got the the attention of, of a lot of people and all around the world. Uh, I guess it was just the simplicity of the song uh, and just you can sing it straight away as well. Um, that's kind of one of my main things is just keeping it really simple but the, all the elements work together and it's not cluttered. Um, so yeah, that's great. <laughs> In recent years, SoundCloud has become a very competitive, high-paced environment, yet you've been able to amass a huge fan base despite a relatively tame releases. Do you feel like that helps make each project that much more impactful? Yeah, um, my manager and stuff would hate me because, yeah, I, I really don't release that much music. But um, I think uh, definitely the impact of me when I have something out, it's really important to me. And it, it means a lot to me. I don't just put something out because, you know, I should do this at this time. So everything I do put out is really special uh, for me. But yeah, no, it's, it's great having a lot of followers on SoundCloud, on Spotify as well. I use a lot on Facebook. So it's really good to have um, everyone engaged and um, excited about something I come out with um, instead of just like putting something out every few months. So I'm actually working on an album at the moment. So yeah, it'd be good to play more than like three songs of mine. So yeah, it's very exciting. I'm looking forward to that too. <laughs> Can you name three artists that serve as your biggest influences? One from your childhood, your teens, and now? Oh, that's a good question. Um, childhood, um, I just, I love the Beach Boys and I love their harmonies and things like that. So like, yeah, probably, probably the Beach Boys when I was a child. Um, teens, definitely Daft Punk. That kind of got me into where I am now and writing music and, and like figuring out what kind of music I wanted to write. And now I would say, um, I listen to a lot of different stuff, um, but I love the kind of uh, like Frank Ocean um, and Drake, like that kind of like slower, houseier vibe. Um, but I also love uh, like Tourist, a guy from the UK. Um, the Gorillas are coming out with a new album. Like I love that kind of stuff as well. Like bands that were big when I was um, a teenager, but you're coming back as well. Um, Radiohead as well, just like the experimentation of it. And yeah, lots of different things. Your approach to production could be described as minimalistic, mm -hmm. yet very emotive, especially on tracks like Lay Down and Embrace. What is it about minimalism that attracts you? Um, it's, yeah, again, it's just like if, if you keep a song simple um, and you have just those elements that really connect, so like a vocal or, or just that lush pad and just, yeah, I kind of get a lot of inspiration for that as well from like James Blake. Um, I love his voice and just, yeah, his just pops right out of the mix um, and everything is just so mellow and chilled underneath. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just, yeah, it's just definitely, I've always written music like that, just a few elements and, and just make them the best they can be and that's it. Your vocals have a very distinct timbre and cadence, old school but with a modern edge. Who are some artists that have influenced your vocal style? Well actually, uh, for Something About You, I wanted to get um, an artist named Samfa from the UK on it, because um, I love like Young Turks and Jamie XX and all those kind of guys. Um, so I was actually, yeah, I, I asked him and he was doing his album that just came out, um, so I didn't have the opportunity to do it with him. So I. Um, I recorded myself and, and a friend of mine, um, George Maple, and uh, we pitched, yeah, just pitched our voices and, and that's kind of what came from it. So, but yeah, it was definitely originated from like a Sampha style, like really like sultry, sexy um, kind of vibe, yeah. You've mentioned in past interviews that you're very creatively involved in the making of your music videos. Where do you think that interest in visual storytelling stems from? Do you plan on delving deeper into the visual direction side of things in the future? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that all comes from um, Daft Punk's Discovery album and uh, the, I think he's a Japanese artist actually, the Interstellar 5555. Mm -hmm. So it's a movie, um, well they're all separate clips but when you put them together it's a movie about um, uh, their, their album and it's like an actual storyline. Um, so that's where I got 
um, that kind of idea from is um, if you can uh, tell a story like visually with your music it's so much more impactful and it means something so much more um, so yeah no I'm really really trying hard to um, create that visual visual element with my music yeah and lastly could we get a word for your Japanese listeners yeah sure uh, hey guys, I'm so excited to be here. I've never been here before and um, I'm really excited to play on uh, Friday in Osaka and Saturday in Tokyo and I hope to come back really soon because I really love this place. Thank you.